I said, okay, you know what? I'm not finna do a whole 15 minutes. I'm about to just go hit him with my Denzel, bitch. Uh, I know this finna work. You go to Denzel. <laughs> so I went in my pocket and I pulled. I said, <laughs> had my Denzel ready. I said, boom. Keep your hands off of me. <laughs> Whatever the line was, yeah. you can't eat a two hamburgers, but I can eat one. <laughs> and I said, man, <coughs> nobody. <laughs> can you hear me? I said, I just did. That was Denzel. That was I Denzel. did. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Perfect. Welcome to the Sunday Scoop. Uh, I am your host, Richard Washington, joined by Callie Scott, and we are coming to you live from the world-famous Laugh Factory Hollywood Chocolate Sundays Comedy Show. Yes, there's a whole entire live show happening right behind us, and we are here with the comedians that are actually on the show. They took a little time out. They're going to come and party with us for a little bit. Awesome. So today we have Trey Elliott and London Brown (laughs) joining us, and we just got your bios real quick, so you know we're going to talk your shit for you, okay? So I got uh, I got Trey. Yeah, do my bio first, cause London, uh, <laughs> London got some. It's yeah. always a thing with the bios, like comedians, like yeah, do, yeah, put me first. Do my bio yeah. first, real quick. Just go over it real fast. <laughs> so I got do. I got Trey Elliott has been featured on HBO Max's Hacks yeah. and Laugh Mob's Laugh Tracks on True TV. Yeah. He's the host of Laughs on Fox yeah. and is touring right now with Tony Rock. Yeah. Come on, somebody, Rock Trey, the mic tour. Trey has also appeared on comedic stages such as stand up uh, comedy show on Stars, BET's Coming to the Stage, yeah. The Last Comic Standing, Def Jam. Comedy and Comedy Central, and he's even headlined across uh, a headline for the U.S. troops overseas yeah. with Armed Forces Entertainment. Yeah. Come on, yeah. man! Yeah, yeah, I've Trey been, Elliott. Yeah, I've been yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. You're doing your, you're but doing you your forgot thing. to say that what I was. I won the Price Is Right, <laughs> the <laughs> most know. important credit of them all. <laughs> the Price Is Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, and we have London Brown. London Brown is an actor and a comedian yeah. who started his comedy career in 2011 when he met Chris Tucker. He is currently playing the role of Marvin on Stars. Power Book 3, Rays of Canaan. Two and uh, <laughs> you can also catch him doing his things in films and series such as HBO's Ballers Ooh. alongside Dwayne The Rock Johnson oh. and Tales from the Hood 3. That boy doing it. There's more. <laughs> Stop playing. No, I, I appreciate it, guys. Been good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. thank you for joining us. And before we, uh, before we hop into the funny, we just wanted to take a quick moment just to show our love to Jack Knight and his family and yes. friends. Um, you will be missed, my brother. And, um, rest in peace. Rest in peace, man. Rest yes. in peace. Yes. Rest in yes. peace. But um, you will be missed. So a um, couple housekeeping rules just for today. Well, first of all, you're watching us live. Yeah. And we want to let you know that we can see you. So if you got <laughs> comments, if you got questions, yes. if you see anything that you think is popping, like, go ahead and say that so that, you know, we can comment back. You know what I mean? Like, Facts. engage with us. Exactly. And if you're here, go ahead and subscribe. Turn your notifications on so you know when we're coming back. And we also have a new channel, right? New channel. So across all socials is going to be at Sunday Scoop Pod. At Sunday Scoop Pod. And um, sponsors, where are you at? Ooh, listen. Where are you at, sponsors? Yeah. Listen, you see us over here with outfits that we just feel like wearing? We can wear your merch. <laughs> Go where ahead. You at? Zara. Where are the sponsors oh. at? So, Alexander yes. McQueen. Water. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to drink water. We would love to drink your alcohol. Facts. So there's an opportunity for you to be a sponsor right now. Hurry up and get it before we get sponsors before you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, get in. Get in. Get in. Um, you mentioned fashion. I did things that we're wearing. I feel like that's a perfect segue into fashion and comedy. Yeah. We got we got a, we got some stylish people sitting at the table with us. Yeah, I I ain't gonna hold you. I was prepared and ready to see your outfit as soon as <laughs> as soon as I see you online, I was like, "Can't wait to see what he's wearing. Can't wait." You know, uh I just feel like it you know, it helps especially like we're doing stand up. The last thing we need to be so present. The last mm-hmm. thing I want to be up there is be is concerned about what I look like. I got to I got to make sure that I'm together there so that I can be as present as I can be. Um, but then also, you know what? I realized that our attitude is different when we feel when we feel we look, you know, appropriate. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, that changes. I, when you think about a lot of people sometimes that are depressed, flip flops, sweats all the time, <laughs> keep a cut. But when you, they say when you feel down and out, put on your Sunday's best because there is something uh, that happens with our energy when we feel like we're ready for. Yeah. You know, we're ready for everything. It's the so, confidence that you have when you get a fresh cut. Come on, it's somebody. It's the same yeah. thing. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Man. Like, 
I, I gotta say, huh. man, um, London, London is is one of the, the flyest dresses that I, you know, what I mean, yeah, I appreciate and, you. And, hey. and, yeah, I like to dress, you know, what I mean, yeah. but you know, brother, brother, I'm like, yo, London got some fly shit on, <laughs> yeah, because it, what's your favorite London outfit? Um, I think it's when he rocking a hat. London, okay. yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and you know why I say that is because huh. sometimes for myself, I will put certain shit on, and I'm like, I don't know. You can't pull it. I don't know if I could pull yeah, it. Or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when I, if I put something on, I'm gonna put it on, and I'm, you know, I'm gonna show up like. Everybody yeah. gonna know it's my first day of having this type of shit on. You dumb. So, so I have you not dumb. yet got to the hat, but I want to. I'm like, yo, I think I can rock it. Yeah. But I just, but let me just, because I feel like everybody know me and be like, yo, boy, Trey can wait to wear that hat. I, I don't want that reaction. Let me tell you, he don't just put on the hat. He can put on the accessories with the no, hat. No, no. the hat is coming with a fly ass jacket. But the hat is part of the accessory. So he going to yeah. have the hat, the accessories, it is that, man. So mm-hmm. I, so London is, you know, I, I got to give him props with, with with the fashion tip, man. Appreciate you, You know brother. what I mean? Which is why I always try to make sure, you know, I'm I'm cool on stage, you know what I mean? Yeah, and definitely. I and I have my different like I said, all right, today I'd be grown man, today I'd be more relaxed. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's you know what I mean? Like so today I'm rocking something. A, I, I got the very nice quality. Right. It is very good. nice. It's, it is. it's the high end Zara. Facts. It ain't the, it ain't the I could tell there's a there's a a, a weight. Yeah, it's a weight. You know what I'm saying? It's a weight on the shirt. There's a weight. It's a weight, a weight. To, the, yeah. to the Zara. Yeah. So, so yeah. this is when you go to Zara, you be like, wait, this ain't supposed to cost this much. <laughs> this is this shirt, and then this, mm-hmm. the Alexander McQueen's to compliment. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know I mean, with the with the with the with the jeans. So yeah. I try to, you know what I mean, make sure I come correct, you know, when, when I'm on stage. Like you say, when you when you look good, you you feel good. Did it take you time to acquire like that kind of knowledge? Cause when I first started doing stand up, I ain't gonna lie to you, like I felt like as a woman I wanted to cover up and I wanted to like, you know, make sure that people heard my material. And so like I was very into like, you know, a more conservative style of dress, but then like I wanted to like be funny and I, that mm. was so much more important to me. But now I'd be like, I'm trying to be flashy. All I want you to see everything. Like, have a great show. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, it's um, I've always just been aware of this. How this now? This is a small, small, quick story. My whole sense of style of dressing came from this moment here. I was in the seventh grade, and it was maybe a couple times throughout the year I would get something new, like first day of school, and then maybe Christmas. Mm-hmm. So and Easter. First day of school, Christmas. So September, December, and April. Right. Three so times. About three, about three Maybe. Okay. So my mom, she brought me this little plaid uh, shirt, little dock or something, little casual something. But the whole thing was, I said, man, if I go to school Monday with this nice Easter fit on, I can't go back to my old stuff on Tuesday. Mm. So what I started to do was, I, at that point, I said, I got to keep this up. So I started wearing my uncle's clothes. Cause we both we were both the same height at that time. He's I was like five three, something mm-hmm. like this. So from that point on, I just became very cognitive of of uh, what I look like and that kind of thing. But like you said on stage, we can't have enough confidence. Like mm-hmm. at least for me, when I go up there, I feel like it's my show. Yeah. Like at, if I start first, I go at the end. I feel like it's the London Brown show. So I really just try to be present and feel like that. Cause I'm telling you, when you go on stage, you don't feel comfortable with yourself whatever that is yeah it affects the material and Facts. i don't like feeling like that so mm-hmm. you know I'm, you feel like the audience can smell it it's you know what it is all of it it's a it's a, it's a brand all the way around mm-hmm. like when I, when i'm up there i'm connecting with the guys on the masculinity i'm connecting with the owner with uh or the, the audience with the material and not running the clock i'm connecting with everybody has a part i'm connecting with women so i gotta look I got to look like that. So I'm, I'm hitting all the, you know what I mean? Yeah. So for me, you know, I just rather, I'd rather be, uh, you, you know, you know, it's like, if you gonna, if you want to be a star, you got to, you got to look like a star. I star was, energy. I was always, yeah, I was always taught my, my late, the late great, my acting coach, Ivan Marcota, the late great Ivan Marcota used to say, okay, you got to look like a star. Okay. Like Okay, you got to get a costume, like Eddie Murphy, okay? Yeah, do you feel like it's a costume? And and so for me, like like Lennon said, you got to walk like a star, talk like a star, act like a star, and you got to look like a star. Because when you look like that, yeah. that draws that star energy. And people would then come to you and be like, he ain't hurt for nothing, but I want to still work with this dude. You mm-hmm, know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
and and that was my that was my mentality, man. Because when it came to me with dressing, I had a moment in the third grade that changed my whole mm. perception of dressing. Uh-huh. I wanted I wanted to I don't know why, but I wanted a pair of biker shorts. Okay. That's very off. interesting. I guess I had watched too many cameo videos. Got you, got you, got you. I said, yo, mom, give me a pair of biker shirts. I lied yeah. to you not. My mom bought me, and and she should have stopped me. She bought me a pair of biker shorts with a yellow stripe, with the yellow stripes on the side. I was real skinny in the third grade. I put those biker shorts on and went to school. Now, no, I was skinny. You know, biker shorts supposed to be tight. They yeah. was loose. Oh, my biker shorts look like hammer pant shorts on me. I went to school and I got clowned. Roasted. All day. <laughs> <laughs> all day. And Damn. I went home and threw them biker shorts in the trash. I said, this will never, yeah. ever, ever You got to be responsible for your fashion. You, yeah. can't, you can't put it in other people's hands. That's yeah, not, man. That's, not, okay. I, I definitely, that's why, yeah. like, when I do, usually when I do a, a photo shoot or I do different projects, I'm just like, just let me know what you want to do or what, what the theme is. I'll bring... I style all my stuff, carpets and everything, because mm. sometimes nobody, for me, nobody knows me better than me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and I, and I, nice. I like, this is also part of my brand, which is hmm. I want to, I want my fashion to definitely work its way into my career. And so when I, when I do these red carpets and different things, I purposely make sure that it's me. Because yeah. again, I, I gotta be comfortable with whatever that is. If you, as long as you like what you got on, he can be in a suit, and you can be, you know, in a, in a jogger fit. If I'm in a hat, I don't ever feel overdressed or underdressed because mm-hmm. I'm comfortable yeah. with, with that. So that's why when I walk into a space, I'm not, I don't be looking at nobody. Yeah. Not like yeah. that. I mean, you know, I, I will give my shout-out to my bros. Like, mm-hmm. yo, that's, that's what's up and that's what's up. But I'm always comfortable with me. Yeah. I mean, that's why I talk about it. I mean, you know, that stuff is we got to be at peace with Facts. ourselves, you know what I mean? I love that for you. I'm definitely calling all my homegirls and my mama on FaceTime to check my outfit before I leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people call me. I, 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 <laughs> they FaceTime you? Low, low key, the, the comics won't tell you, but, you know, there there are a few comics that I have, you know, I, I help along with. I say, yo, it's cool. Just hit me. Don't, yeah. I don't want you out here looking like this. Yeah. Right. It, just hit me if you, you, man, I got some money, but I don't know how to. I don't know how to put the pieces Call together. Who, who are you? Who are you styling for these days? I can't. I don't want to put nobody. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what are you styling for? I, 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 I have yeah. given a couple some, and, and these because these are my guys, these are my my bros. Okay. But I just say, yo, man, if you if you got some questions, just hit me. Yeah. Not that I know everything, but the little bit I know, I'm willing to share it, man. Because mm-hmm. like, I just understand. Because sometimes people just don't. They don't know what to do they don't or know how what to do. where to go. You know, for me, you know, I'm lucky. You know, my 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 girl is a is a former model. Ah, so, oh, so she know the style. So she know the style. Ah, okay, you know I mean, you. this should go right there. Uh, you know, so. <laughs> oh, all so, the time, uh, looking at me. Imagine if I was that dude, I'm like, hey. <laughs> oh, you see, I'm on the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If I was that but, dude, <laughs> but I've always, like I said, man. You know, growing up from the East Coast, you know, fashion was a big was a big thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, I love the fact that, you know, L.A. don't got a winner. Mm. So yeah. it was kind of hard for my fashion because I love the scarves, the, the pea coat. Right. Pea coat and that. I love so the So I was a dude out here in L.A. in October. Like, I don't give a damn what the temperature is out here. I'm out here. And Jersey yeah. is cold. I'm wearing this out here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just, just had to just take it I off. But I'm, so I lived in New York for a little bit. The first week that I got there was summertime, and I brought my Cali energy to New York. So I pulled up to the club wearing like a pea coat, and he was like uh, looking at me. Uh, he was like, I don't, he was like, I don't even need to see your ID. You from Cali, huh? I was like, Yeah, you're right, you're right. I learned immediately. I was like, Okay, pea coats are just for the winter. It's utility in New York. You yeah, know I had to learn yeah. that because I'm I'm, I'm yeah. living on the East Coast right now, and it's like I didn't realize that the East Coast has you got two closets. You got winter stuff winter? and summer stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I, I had to I had to learn that because you know yep. now I'm, that's why I'm in the sweater. Now I got all my East Coast stuff here. My stuff is in storage, so I'm still adjusting it and so forth. But I, yeah. I, I, it's a lot to learn. Absolutely. I'm so from LA. I have no clue what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> through and through. Um, <laughs> bombing. Oh. Wait, so let's just get into it. It's a comedy podcast, so let's just get into it. You want to? I feel like you got one. Got many. <clears throat> All right, so I feel like if you ain't never, I mean, bombing is part of the game. Yes. Yeah. But my worst bomb, once yeah. I became quote unquote professional, happened at this spot 
in Reseda. When I moved here, I was seven years in the game, so I was from New York, from New York, from Jersey. Well, uh, I'm from Jersey, Jersey, but I was living in D.C. in okay. the D.M.V. Maryland, D.C. Before I moved out here, so I'm cons- I'm really a D.M.V. comedian. That's what people don't know. I started comedy in Atlanta because I went to Clark, but I only did like two shows mm-hmm. in Atlanta, open mics. Then I moved to Maryland. That's when I honed my skills as a comedian. Was in Maryland and D.C. So I'm technically mm. a DMV comedian, but I'm from Jersey. So is there like beef between I'm a New York comedian and a DMV comedian? Nah, nah, it's oh, okay. all love, all love. Yeah. All love. Okay. So when I came out here, I'm already funny. I'm already <laughs> killing stages and shit like that. This is whatever. It was this particular night and on Tuesday nights in Reseda at a spot called Weber's. My guy Evan Lynell was hosting. It was live music, and then in intermission from the live band, they would have a comedian. I would do it all the time. I would do this room all the time. Kill. This one, so one Tuesday, it was a Tuesday I went up there and killed it, right? The next week I went back. So I, I, had, I was hosting a comedy store. I did my set at the comedy store. It was a chick named uh, B-Flat from Philly that had did the comedy store. She killed at the comedy store. So we all went to this venue in Reseda to do the spot. Like, yo, I got another spot for you if you want to get some more time. Okay, I'm coming. She came, and B-Flat is funny. Yeah. But the audience wasn't giving her... What I thought they should have gave her. Yeah. And I'm sitting there like, oh, the audience act a little funny, but it's okay. I'll get them. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you. So the week, famous last words. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'll get them. I'll and show I, you. And, and I say that because the week before that, like I said, it was a live band. So, so what would happen when the live band had got off stage, I was doing my set and I did an improv about the drummer. Like, you see the drum up there, like, acting like he having conversations with people while he playing the drum. So I got on the drum and was improv <laughs> Killed it with that. Mm-hmm. Next week, B-flat go up there, she ain't hitting. I said, oh, I'm going to get him. I got, now my girl, I got my girl with me at this time and her friend, and they got people from out of town. They hyping me up. Oh, Trey, don't go to the bathroom with Trey. Go, Trey about to kill him. Trey about to get him. I get up there. Audience ain't messing with me at all. Mm. I'm like, damn. I said, shoot. So I'm hitting them. I'm like, they ain't messing with me. I said, you know what? I'm about to go do that same improv on the drum that I did last week. <laughs> this again. <laughs> let, me, let me go in that recycle bin real quick. Get these jokes out. Okay. And as a yeah. vet, I know always stay in the pocket. Don't start scrambling. <laughs> yeah, I go yeah. get on that drum, start doing the improv. It's dead quiet. Mm. But what you don't get is that I had to walk to the drum. <laughs> so the worst part was getting up from that drum set the walk to walk back to the microphone uh, in dead silence. Oh, you yeah. physically got on yeah, the drum. Yeah, I physically <laughs> got on the drum. Uh, I'm tripping over microphone cords. Oh, yeah. Ding, 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 ding. It's, it's dead silent. And that walk was like a mile. It felt like it took me 15 minutes to get to the mic. The mic was right there. It's dead silent. And I get on the mic and I was like, Say, yo, that worked last week. And they was like, well, it ain't worked tonight. Oh, man. Did, I it, like, did it get hot? Did it, it got it, hot. It got, hot. It got like night. It's something about bombing to get, get real hot. Yeah. You like, who turned the heat up? It gets hot. I said, who turned the heat oh up? Oh, my God. And, and the host knows me very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and so it's the thing with comedians. When we, we, when we know how good each other, but, you know, he got to do was like, comedy ain't for everybody. Oh, said, oh man. Oh. <laughs> that's cold. Yeah, man. <laughs> so I would say that's probably my funniest, like, worst bomb. Yeah. You know what I mean? That I that always stands out to have me. You, have you drummed since? Never got on the drum I, since. Okay. <laughs> that's about right. <laughs> <Learned your lesson>. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> that's great. That's a great story. I think uh, I think one of one of my times was um, I was at the uh, the J spot here in L.A. in Inglewood, and the J spot people think sometimes people feel like if the audience is black and you're black comedian, it's just supposed to just work. But the J spot was like this older, like 40, 45 and up, mature, bill paying homeowner, <laughs> black people, church going and everything, mm-hmm. and whatever it was. I think it just had been a long night. And, you know, the host, one of these hosts was just, like, doing long time, long sets in between. So, anyway, I went up there, and I did the first joke, and it didn't really, it didn't hit nothing. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> when that first joke don't hit, you be like, But I have more. There's more. Yeah, yeah. So, I went into the next joke. 15 minutes. I'm about to just go hit him with my Denzel, bitch. Uh, I know this finna work. You go to Denzel. <laughs> so I went in my pocket and I pulled. I said, <laughs> had my Denzel ready. I said, boom. You keep your hands off of me. <laughs> Whatever the line was. Yeah. You can't eat two hamburgers, but I can eat one. <laughs> 
And I said, man, <coughs> nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? I said I just did. That was Denzel. That was Denzel. I did. <laughs> Nobody. And and like you said, that walk, those walks, boy. Because the the thing about it too, after you also it's like you got to stick around. Yeah. You, that's if you really want to. That's you really the worst. Gotta, Cause is there that voice in your head that's like, I can't leave now. Yo, I got it. I, I mean, like, but I'm saying, through. like, I'm saying, like, after the fact, after. like, you, you, you gotta have the same. You gotta stick around. You gotta sit in that sometimes. Because yeah. what you want to do, of course, right now. We had some, you know, I won't say we, he had a, a really dope set. Mm -hmm. Humbly, I'll say we had really good sets. Yeah. It would be nice to be down there oh, and, yeah. and, and fellowshipping. Right. Because <laughs> you, you, you had a great set. Yeah. And people just be high five and everything. <laughs> but when you don't do well, you be you want to, oh, I remember I just wanted to leave. And everybody come and they come, they walk past me to, oh, man, you, <laughs> brother. <laughs> you, next time, man, you going to yeah. get them. I said, um, yikes. But it's hot. It be hot when they do drugs look over. And it's times where, like, when you bomb it, sometimes you be too embarrassed to leave but too embarrassed to stay. It's so you weird. just stuck in you the middle. Because you don't want to leave and be like, yo, they got the best of me. Mm -hmm. And you like, damn, I'm staying, but they got the best of me. So you just kind of <laughs> in the middle, well, like. You, you can't leave because. Everything happens after the show. Like, yeah. as a comic, you can't leave. Even if you embarrass, it's sad. You be your heart be broken, when, face be on the floor. But you, you get the experience, and like you might, you might get a nugget from somebody that you're supposed to get. No facts, mm. man. Because when I was about, when I first started comedy, insight, yeah, when I first started comedy, it was always like one white woman that would always tell me, "You're funny to me." <laughs> It was always one white woman that would just say how funny I was. I'd yeah. be like, thank you. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know, but Rich is a comedian. I'm like two weeks in. Two weeks Two weeks. So okay. We Come on. You, you got a lot of bombs in you. You got a lot of bombs in you. I had my first bomb two weeks ago. Yeah, man. We talked about it now every episode on the podcast <laughs> for the past two, three weeks. But you know, the, the, the longer you're yeah. in the game, you're a bomb, uh, the definition of a bomb is different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because now for me, the audience could be laughing. And in my head, I'm like, I'm bombing. That's what happened to me. Because <laughs> I'm not really getting, like, I, I'm not getting the level of laughs that I think this joke should get. Mm. You know, so for me, so for example, like, I, like people don't know, like, if you ever watched the Michael Jackson, the Oprah interview, and when Michael Jackson talked about the Motown 25 special when he first did Billie Jean on TV and did the moonwalk, he said he hated that performance mm -hmm. he said oh my god that was the word he, he was didn't like the performance he said he walked was walking to his car and some white kid was like oh my god that was the greatest thing i ever i ever seen and michael's like because he hated it and sometimes I, that, I, my sets feel like that where i'd be like yeah i don't know oh yeah. and then somebody just come to me and be like yo and i you know what i mean mm -hmm. so but, so bombing oh the definition the longer you're in changes yeah you know what i'm saying and also phil and what you're saying, it changes because, um, like, you go up there with a different purpose after doing it for a while. So sometimes, for me, it's not even about sometimes always getting the laughs as much as it is about me wanting to try something new. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. even if trying something new means I, can, I, had, I didn't get the laughs, because mm -hmm. we at this point, you, you got a bunch of stuff you can go to after doing it for a while. You, you, you got tons of jokes that you could you, you can lean on. Immediately. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. like, do you want to grow? You, do you want to sit in the quiet and grow, or you want to stay, stay stagnant and laugh? You gotta take a risk. So sometimes, yeah. you know, the bombing. Ain't, that's why when, when people be talking about hmm. Chappelle and the cats bombing, I'm like, these dudes are, are craftsmen. Yeah. Like, it's not always about, like I said, it's not always about the laugh as much as it is about building the material. And they're workshopping. Absolutely. I, Absolutely. Sometimes, like, you feel like you bombed because you didn't get to, like, say. Sometimes, like, I'm an autopilot and I'll say a joke that, like, I've, like, punched up and, like, kind of changed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, like, I, I said it the way I didn't want to say it. I wanted to say, like, yeah, the joke worked, but, like, yeah. I wanted to do something a little yeah, 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 right, yeah. right, 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 right. Shot on these like, niggas. Like, <laughs> ten, like, tonight, yo, I wanted to do something. I wanted to do something totally different than what I did tonight. Mm -hmm. But. The energy of, you know, you know, I got my mom here mm -hmm. visiting, her husband, my son, his girlfriend. And I wanted to do this whole bit about my girl and putting this dresser drawer together. Mm -hmm. But I, I was like, and it's brand new. I was like, we're going to do it tonight. But the energy just took me to a whole mm -hmm. different improv wow. set that I was like, oh, this is real material now. 
Because I was like, yo, my mom and her husband here. And I was like, you know that ain't my dad if I got to say my mom and her husband. <laughs> All improv. Yeah. Yeah. And then I went into just the situation. And then I got off stage. I was like, yo, that was a dope set. But I was like, I didn't do what I what I had planned on doing. You know what I'm saying? But that, I think it takes well, the whole theme of this whole conversation, just confidence. It takes a certain level of confidence and experience to believe in yourself enough to be like, okay, yeah. I, can, I can go this direction and it can be funny. And, and it can be funny. funny. I remember yeah, talking, exactly. shout out to David Arnold. I remember one time I was in the... Uh, I, I, I want to take his class. I heard his class is he's dope. A, he's, a, he's the truth, man. Yeah. David Arnold is the truth. Yeah. I remember one time he was in the... I think it was David Arnold. And he was in the hallway of the comedy union. Shout out to Enz Mitchell. And I was like, asking, I was like, what you, what, what you going to do tonight? And this was when I was early on in the game. And he was just like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand that because when I first got in, I was like, I got these five I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. But I realized after doing it for a while, sometimes it's like that. I don't, I don't necessarily always go to certain shows with a set. I just know I got these bags. And I kind of stay present enough to let the audience take me where... Yeah. It, you know, I kind of did some of that tonight. So, I, I but I do understand that too. Where sometimes mm -hmm. you say, "Okay, cool, I got this to set I'm gonna do." But the audience, said, you know, fortunately, he was present enough to to move with with that audience. Because otherwise, sometimes we could be so stuck. That's another way we be so stuck in your your yeah, set. set. Yeah, and yeah. You know, that way, cause you be. <laughs> <laughs> I did that at the improv. I was locked in with my set, and yeah. I needed to. I need to do the reverse. I needed to just be present. Be, be free. Yeah. That, that's why, I'm like number one, like Achilles. I don't know what it is. Like, I, if I'm having a good time, they're having a good time, and I know that. Mm -hmm. But it'd be like. I just, I worked on this. <laughs> I worked right on, on it. Y'all finna get these jokes. Right on. And, and, and then I'd be sad. Cause I, <laughs> I could have just did, yeah. I could have just did a little freestyle. We could have been having a good yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. Both yeah. of you guys have been on very big shows at networks. Um, you know, you've got, you've got hacks, you've got ballers as well as uh, Kanan power book. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to talk about casting. And that process, the behind the scenes, like what was that like? And did you land the role that you thought you wanted? You know what I'm saying? Like mm. you went for that role. Was it what you expected it to be? Well, let me just say this. I was 300 auditions in. <laughs> <laughs> this on Hacks? Yeah, this, it, this in general. And, okay, period. got you, got you, got you. Yeah. And I said for 2022, I'm going to book something. You put it on your vision board? I put it on my vision board. Mm -hmm. And it was the first, out of all the shit I've done where I'm like on television or TV, whatever, I never really had to audition. It was like, yo, we doing this, 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 that. So yeah. I got a thing. But but I, people don't know I audition all the time and I wasn't booking anything. I'd have been put on the veils, I'd blah, 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 blah. Like, but I could never book. Yeah. So Hex was the first thing that my agent was like, yo, you got one. Dope. And Amazing. I was like, Where you at, what agent? Um, I'm with A-List Management, A-List Talent, okay. and Baron One Entertainment. So A-List is my management, Vanessa Henderson, what's up? And then Baron Entertainment is my agency. So dope. they all work together. So when I got Hacks, it was dope. It was just like, finally. Because for me, it, it's just about opening that door, like, and, and, and finally getting in that door to, you know what I mean, or to get that validation or to get that confidence. Because when you audition a whole lot and you ain't booking nothing, you'd be just, like, yeah, it's discouraging. You'd be like, God dang. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for me, I was like, finally, you know what I mean? It was a few lines, but I'm just like, yo, finally, like, I'm there. So now I'm more confident in my, yeah, in my auditions and I'm more confident because. I started getting private coaching for all my auditions. Mm. So I invest a lot in myself to make sure that I'm, you know, getting the proper look. So I have a lot of the same casting directors calling me in for different roles. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know what? It ain't about booking a role. It's about booking the right one yep. for me. So that's why, you know, I'm just like, I'm just going to keep, keep getting. But Hacks was dope. You know what I mean? First time I had a like a for real trailer with my name on it. You dope. know what I mean? Dope, and I was just, dope. you know, it felt good, man. So I'm just looking forward to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm just looking forward to to to, to be relocating like what London doing, man. <laughs> like, you know, like and getting that recurring. My goal yeah. is to have a recurring series by the time my son graduate college. He got one more year, he's going to his senior year. Mm -hmm. I want to be on that recurring series at his graduation. So his mama family, I could be like, uh-huh. <laughs> be like, uh-huh. That's the motivation. You just never know what drives a person. I definitely like, thought uh, it was going to be for your son. <laughs> it's just so I could be like, yeah, yeah. Bro. <laughs> I did that. I did that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean. Um, well, as far as my audition process, I come from theater. 
So, um, okay. I, I'm I didn't coming, know that. Yeah, I'm coming from the acting side anyway, but so that's why actually the, the, me, the transition from theater to stand up wasn't that difficult because they're both staged, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but my first TV project really. When did you start doing theater, real quick? Um, I've been doing theater, I mean, as early as high school. Wow. I started, I started working theater. I was middle school in theater. Wow. Yeah. So, okay. you know, going back to that. But I, I would say uh, my audition story would be one of Ballers. Um, at the time, I was working as a choreographer, and uh, I was just, you know, dancing. I was talents. just yeah, living like there. Yeah, you like dancing? I didn't even know that. That's dope. I didn't know you was dancing. You was, like, on tour with Chris Brown? Like, you was dancing, dancing? I was paying bills through, through some dancing. I was teaching oh, shit. Um, oh, okay. and working on and, and different stuff like that. So... Long story short, I got a call one day. I was all my stuff was at my mother's house at this time. Everything I owned was in my mother's garage, <laughs> and so I got a call coming from rehearsal. And um, shout out to Chris Spencer. He called me, said, "Yo, man, have you auditioned for Ballers?" I was like, "No." Nah. He said, "What are they looking for you?" I was like, "All right." And he said, I'm, "Can I send me your number?" I said, "Sure." They called me, and um, they, uh, HBO called me. I went to go audition. I was really hoarse vocally because I had been teaching and not sleeping, mm -hmm. so. I remember during the audition process, I was like, yo, if y'all can't understand what I'm saying or hear me, let me come back tomorrow and let me rest his voice. He was like, no, you're fine. And so anyway, they, they, I went into audition. I did about, that process was maybe like two months. It was just call back after call back. And then um, initially, the character Fat Reggie was only supposed to do maybe like an episode. Mm -hmm. And um, during the audition process, they decided to make him... Uh, Expanded a, a role, series, a series yeah, 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 yeah. and that's why actually on that show, a lot of people don't know. I did a lot of improvising on that show because they didn't even have all my dialogue like that because <laughs> I wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah. So they let me, you know, we was able to to build the character uh, of Fat Reggie and have him be important to the show yeah. and able to arc him in an interesting way. Where the first season he was like really annoying, then we took him to a place where he was more responsible. So. Man, with, with that, that annoying thing, phase was driving me crazy. <laughs> but I had to do that. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. I was like, he just keeps fucking that's up the That's how you know he's doing a good job oh, on the show. The <laughs> but that's, that was also yeah, that was great. the leading factor. Yeah. I had to make him interesting in a way that he was going to stick around. If I didn't create any value with him, then it's a throwaway he, he would have been throw. He would have just been the, yeah. the best friend. Yeah. So it was important for me to just play him really snarky and, 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 yeah. and play and also... Mm -hmm. It was all, first of all, it was all God, because mm. I didn't even have an agent at the time. Mm. I, wow. I didn't have an agent or manager. Wow. Um, wow. So that kind of came through. And then, Just for those watching, that's like an impossible needle in the haystack situation. Yeah. The fact that you even got audition is Yeah, that's crazy. what I'm saying. Like, that, well. that doesn't happen if you don't have a manager or an agent. To get wow. that profile, it's, it's impossible. So, yes. But that's how. Look at God. That's how I'm, I'm yeah. so humble. And understand that I knew it was God because mm -hmm. nobody else's hands was involved. Mm. And so when when you understand, it's the kind of cliche, but when you understand where your blessings come from, it allows you to keep uh, a, a, a real grounded base of humility. Because it's like, yeah, we have to think of it like this. Like, first of all, our gifts in, are not for us. We have to look at these gifts like... Mm -hmm. Like rentals, rental cars. Yeah. Like who flosses in a rental? It's not. <laughs> it's not chores. Yeah, so, man, that's so dope. You know, when we understand that, then you know, then God continues to do what He does. But yes. and then also that was so the fact that I didn't have an agent was the first thing. Uh, when they made him a regular, mm -hmm. that was another thing. The other part was all my scenes were, were across from Dwayne. If you can't be the 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 uh, the hero. The next best thing is the Dang, villain. Yeah. So it worked out where even if people didn't want to see me, they had to because I was next to Dwayne. Ooh. So these are those things where I know God. Look, sometimes we'll, we'll ask God. And sometimes we'll say, you know, hey, God, uh, I want a car. And we'll, we'll keep it right there on the surface. But when you're walking in your purpose, he'll add some things to the car that you didn't even know you wanted. Yep. Like he'll give you leather seats fully loaded the color you want with the rims and the, so that's how I felt God did with this I had been at the time I had been teaching and and I was a teacher I was working after school programs boys and girls clubs and all these different things with kids for a long time I had mm -hmm. sown a lot of seeds into just helping kids and, and teaching and I felt like God was just like okay thank you for since you've done that for me 
Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and let you move. This. Let you move in your in your purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm glad it, it, that worked out. You know, for me, that's why I also try to help people with auditions, man, and, and or mm -hmm. give them whatever advice I know. But your confidence does grow once you you land a project. You're like, oh, I can't handle this. Yeah. I, I can, you know, so I'm excited for your journey about mm -hmm. the fact that you, you you felt the growth. Did yeah. you walk into the room differently, bro? Yeah, you man. Book a project. Yeah, and and, and you, you, it's a fact. And, and the fact that how, mm. you know, I started treating my auditions like, okay, like, you know what? This ain't a big deal. Yeah. I'm just going to do what I do. And the fact that London even was saying, he went in there and was like, look, my voice is, my voice is going. If y'all don't can't understand what I'm saying, I'll come back tomorrow. A lot of people ain't going to say that no, in the audition. They they're, just push, gonna, oh. they're just going to be like, Ugh, I don't want to <laughs> push no wrong buttons. And that's how I started being, and it's different now because everything is self tape because of COVID. So you're not walking in the room, yeah. but I've just really started just learning how to just be me, bro. And, Sometimes it, when you go into an audition and you act like you don't give a fuck, then the casting directors are looking like, wait, why doesn't he give a fuck? It's you all of that, that, and not to cut yeah. y'all, it's, it's it's so much of what y'all saying, and it's also yeah. that thing where a lot of times people be like shaking, trying to read the thing, <laughs> yeah. but a lot of times when they be writing these parts. They don't have an idea of these characters. They're looking for us to bring to these characters to, the to life. life. That's yes. why Fat Reggie was supposed to be fat. I'm not that. <laughs> but it didn't matter. Once we got into the room, I let them, I made them see what they mm -hmm. needed to see. So, But then also, you know, preparation is a big thing, too. I realize when I'm not prepared for an audition, that's when I'm not I'm not really in my bag. with the. I'm, yeah. But when, I'm, when I do, do the work. Do the work. Because uh, also another thing is like a lot of people feel like just because you don't book a part doesn't mean you're not good. They just wanted to do something else. Something so different. That we got to not tear ourselves down like, dang, I'm going to. Yeah, getting your They head. just want to go to. Ain't yeah. got nothing to do with you. But it doesn't mean that you weren't seen by who you're supposed to be seen by also. Right. Both. People forget mm -hmm. that everything that you do, you need to do well because you never you know go. whose eyes are and on you. And it's the same hundred casting directors. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. Bro, they, they, they talk. They see. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. I, and I realize if the same casting directors that keep bringing you in, you're yeah. doing something right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and because I was getting discouraged because like like I'm, you know I put it out there I auditioned for like Nickelodeon mm -hmm. and Disney like a hundred times, and they and they call me in for everything and I'd be like yo why are they not booking me but then I look at it like you know what but they like me <laughs> yep. Yep. and I'm like it's something it's gonna be something it ain't about book like and I go back it ain't about booking. A role is about mm -hmm. booking the right one. Mm -hmm. yeah. So whether it's with Disney, Nickelodeon, Stars, is I, like once I get booked for certain recurring, it, it, how I believe is going to be the right one for me, yeah. something that I could flourish and grow in. Because yeah. I don't want to book nothing that ain't nobody. That's going to be some bullshit. Ain't nobody <laughs> wise, it, and it ain't and it ain't right. bringing me out the way that I feel yeah. like I need Challenge to. You as artist. Yeah. yeah, right, 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 right. So. How do you? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, real quick, real quick. Um, we just want to give a shout out to John Kuhn. He yeah. is a loyal watcher and viewer of Chocolate Sundays. John uh, Kuhn. John Kuhn, we appreciate you. He had a question, actually, for both of the comedians. Um, and it's kind of a tough one because I feel like it's putting you on the spot, but I'm going to ask it and you answer it however best possible. So what is the best joke you've told that got the most laughs? You know, it's kind of interesting because... Thank you, John. It's interesting because, for example... A joke, uh, you can get a good laugh off of a joke in the middle of your set. You know, like, let's say, I, let's say I do a set tonight, and usually I talk about, let's say, I talk about the computer, I talk about the laptop, the Red Bull, and the water. Monday night, the, the laptop might be the, be the star that, that evening, or mm. Wednesday might be the Red Bull. So, because sometimes, like, I, I have this nice, strong Denzel bit I do, but sometimes I don't always get there. If I got yeah. a joke that hit harder... That's another knowing when to tap out. So some, uh, the other night, I didn't even get to the Denzel bit. I did something else. and I did some crowd work. The, the audience went up, and I was like, all right, good night. <laughs> yeah. So it, it yeah. can change. To, not to be verbose about that, but it can change. For me, uh, I would say my funniest joke and my signature joke that, I was known, that I'm known for, you know what I mean, was my cool, cool, cool joke. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, 
like, you know, cool, just, cool, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, cool, I love that. cool. I love that joke. Where it's just like, you know, ladies, if if a guy, if you ever hear a guy say "cool" more than four times in a row after yes, a price, that, that means he yeah, really yeah, yeah. can't afford what he about to do. Cool. So, yeah, you know, I, and then I get my example. I went to go buy a car. And dude told me the payment was going to be 800 a month. 800 a month? Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> so that became, like, for me, like, my, that was, like, my first major where people walk around and be like, yo. That's the cool, guy. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, Trey, yeah. cool, 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 cool. Mm-hmm. So that was the joke, you know what I mean, for me that it, it everybody loved. And it's, like, my yeah. my classic my classic bit, and I don't even do it here at the at the, like like the Laugh Factory no more very rare because it's that is that classic bit. Yeah. So now you know, but that but on the road, killing, cool cool cool, sit <laughs> up because I call it back. Yeah. I do this so so that's my so that yeah, that's will be bit, mine. Yeah. yeah yeah the cool cool cool. I'm really um in awe being at this table with all this talent and being with like people who are so multifaceted. Like how do you feel like when it comes to balancing stand up with all of your other like ventures? Um, for me, it's never leaving stand up. Mm. So whatever it is, always even when I'm, I'm shooting or whatnot, yeah. um, uh, stand up is the base, you know. F- so for me, and and then I'll, I think with with the acting thing, it just depends on the parts and the projects. Like with with this character I'm doing in Raising Canaan, he's not necessarily he's not a comedic character. Um, mm. So I've always thought that comedians that go to drama make it they kill, they kill killer. It. You know what, I think, because stand-up is about timing, too, mm-hmm. and being present and understanding people, mm-hmm. and uh, we're always dealing with self um, a lot of times. So as an actor, that's one of those things you got to be, people think you go to acting, you take acting classes to learn how to act, but you actually take acting classes to do the opposite, to, mm-hmm. to not act. To not act. Right. And to, and to, be, to be. That's dope. You know what I mean? So I think that with, with stand-up, how it helps is that it allows us to be very present. So for me, I'm able to work it. Yeah, and for me, you know, it's just comedy is always going to be my number one mm-hmm. bread and, and and butter. So for mm-hmm. me, you know, it's just like I don't like even with my writing style. Like I don't have to take three hours out of the day or four hours out of yeah. the day to to say I need to write. My writing comes. I write, and you know, some people say this, but when I say that, I'm, I'm for real. Like I literally write on stage. That means I have my premise already in my head mm-hmm. 75% of the time. Yeah. But I will actually write it and create it, performing it. That way, for me, it makes it more authentic. So when it comes to the balance, I'm not at home like, okay, I got to do 10 hours mm-hmm. writing. and then Nah, I just I write on stage. When I got my auditions, you know, I just say, you know, sometimes... In, in a week, I could get three or four auditions in a week, and I'm just like, and it could get a little hectic at times. Where you just like, yeah. all right, you know, but you know, <laughs> and they it, send it to you is do it like two o'clock. Yeah, yeah, that's the pressure, and, man. yeah. And I have an acting coach that's very flexible, so I call yeah. her and be like, I need you two in the morning. I need you yeah. two in the afternoon, and she's there. Yeah, so for dope. me, it, you know, it's just it's just a matter of just saying, yo, this is my job. So you know, I I have to. It's mm-hmm. no option as far as not being able to balance it. It's just. Just saying, all right, look, I might have three auditions that I do in one day. And just be like, all right, let's knock this audition out. All right, done with that. Let's knock this audition out. Done with that. Now let's do this audition. Now I got a set. Okay, I do the set. Oh, shoot. Now I got to be at the LAX to catch a 11, uh, 11, 58, 8 p.m. flight to yeah. get to the, you know what I mean? It, it, you just start realizing, oh, this is my job, and this is just what I got to do, and this is what I'm here for. So you never block out time that you're not doing stand-up when you're on other projects? Well, well, for, for me, you, I mean, of course, if you're doing something, if right. you want to set or doing something, it's just like, yo, I can't do this. If I So if I'm on set, if I book something, like I'm on tour right now with Tone, so if something came up commercial or I got to book something, I'm like, all right, I can't do this weekend. Mm-hmm. Or I, I'm going to miss this Thursday, but I'll do Friday, Saturday, but and Sunday. But it's not like a you. month. I mean, it can be. Okay. I, yeah. I be missing stand Like, if I'm too busy, I'd be, I be like, man, like, I it, need. It, it can be, but that's only if you're busy doing. Like, mm-hmm. while I'm on tour, when I'm touring, it's times when I'm on tour and I have auditions. So, I remember I was in Jacksonville one that's time. That's hard to do. Yeah. I remember I was in, a, in Jacksonville and I had, like, two auditions. I had to go find a self-tape studio in Jacksonville. To go and do record, yeah. but it was so dope because in Jacksonville is a small city, so they was like, "Oh my God, we got somebody, a comedian from LA." She was like, "I'm not going to charge you. I'm just happy to be able to 
record wow. your audition for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And she took forever. I was like, yo, it don't got to be like that. Just set up, put the, the, set camera up the tripod. Up. Like, yeah, man. Like, yeah. Let's get yeah, it. I got, yeah. you know. So, I, yeah. Well, speaking of audition, that's one of the mm. hardest things to do when you're away is trying to. I remember I was touring uh, at the time and I had an audition and I ain't had nobody. And I, <laughs> I, and I didn't think about that. I was just, I was. I was in Memphis, Tennessee, and I had to just use what was in the room, call my coach, and I just set up the ottoman with a chair, the, the coffee table, put a, a white sheet on the back of the door, and put a sh- use one of my shoes, and I just had to balance it. I so it's, been a, there. it's a process to, to try to do these self-tapes. Mm-hmm. Um, but first of all, it's just I, to what he's saying, it's just dope that he got people who, uh, management that, that's interested in sending them out. Because sometimes people don't even get sent out. Yeah. So, you know, whatever it is, I know his breakthrough is on the way. Because what one thing about auditioning, what it does do is every time you have to audition, we have to break down those sides. Mm-hmm. For people who don't know sides are like pieces of the script. So it's like a, it's like many acting classes. Every time you get a script, you get into understanding what's mm-hmm. going on. It's, it's an exercise. It's a muscle. So I'm excited for your journey, bro. Nah, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. And, and, you know, to be honest, man, a lot of times you you have friends in, in this industry that mm-hmm. you may not talk to every day. You may not see every day. But when you see them, you already know it's all love, man. And and yeah. London is one of them dudes that I, back when me and Boogie, my boy Boogie B, when we first moved out here, we would have all these different comedy rooms. Mm-hmm. And we London would be one of the ones we call, yo, London, do our room. And we would give a lot of comedians, like, yo, come do some time. Do 15 minutes, do 20 minutes, do your time. That's a lot of time. Yeah, Yeah. and because, you know, we Mm -hmm. came from the East Coast, so we was used to open mics where people, open mics was like real shows. So first thing we did was, when we moved out here, was have comedy nights for for comedians to be able to do their thing. And London was one of the ones that would come and perform, you know what I mean, and work on this material and do his thing, man. And um, so seeing his growth, and a lot of people won't say it, but, like, when I started seeing that, I would look at, I would watch London on Ballers and watch him on Raising Cane, and that was some of my homework, where I'd be like, okay, I like how he mm-hmm. made that transition. I like how he, you know, did this. I like how mm-hmm. he, you know what I mean, took a beat here. And that helps me out. Yeah. Because I remember one time, and I never, you know, he don't know this because I never told the story, but I was kind of telling him, like, me and me and Boogie, you know, that's my brother, so we talk all the time. I remember one time Boogie called me was like, yo, I did this improv class and London was there. I think it was at the J-Spot. And Boogie was like, yo, that nigga London? He's a beast. He was like, London was a, like, was like, and, and, and so... You know, I knew, like, you know, once he got hit, I was like, yo, because I was watching his shit on Fuse. Yes, mm-hmm. the first TV joint. The, the first TV joint on Fuse, because wow. whenever somebody that I know or rock with got something, even if I watch two episodes, I'm going to support them nice. in, in whatever way. So I do a lot of homework just looking at people that I know. London is one of them where I'll be like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? And I would use that, you yeah, know, from yeah, audition. I, man, so, I appreciate yeah. that, man. Absolutely. I got, I got a couple questions. These are not really comedy related, but just nah. we just want to know. No, nah, good. Um, what's an item under $100 that you bought that's just one of those, like, life-changing items? First of all, it's a great question. Yeah. yeah. I'll start. Gotham Steel Pots. Gotham Steel Pots. Gotham Steel Pots. Let me know. I those, need some pots. Those bro. are the non-stick pots. Yeah. So you can cook eggs. You can cook anything. No pan. I got a seat. I got a seat. Gotham I've been Steel. For, I've yeah, been looking for that, bro. It's good shit. Um, this <laughs> knee pillow that you sleep with in between your legs, it's, it's <laughs> really how good I sleep. That's I, dope. I fall asleep faster. It's so nice. I, I got, sleep Okay, I, I need to make a note of all these products. <laughs> 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 A knee pillow, wow! Knee pillow. It makes you feel, it makes you feel that good. Incredible! If you're a side sleeper, I don't know how you sleep with that. I'm a side sleeper. I, I, yeah, I sleep on the side yeah. now. I sleep on the Something side. About the knees touching. Yeah. It's, you know, you know. It, it just, it does something to your spine. It yeah, they say it does. Yeah, I gotta try that. I'm excited about both these items. <laughs> yeah. Um, for me, I'm going to say this, um, this cigar lighter. I'm a cigar smoker, okay. and I and I bought this torch. You know what I mean? It was like is 30, it like a flamethrower? It's a it's a it's it, 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 it's a torch torch. I know what you're talking about. The yeah. handheld is kind of yeah, like yeah man, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. and it's I just love it, man. It, every time I bring it out, people be like, "Yo, that's a nice, <laughs> that's a nice." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I so I so I love my cigar torch. It was a hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah okay. I love that. Yeah. Was it a gift or you went out and had to get it yourself? It was a gift. 
but I know, I you know, when people give me shit, I look to see how much it was. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. It, yeah. It, it was under 100, but yeah, yeah. I like okay. That. You said life-changing uh, under $100. Yeah. All right. Y'all might have to come back because I really want to find a good answer for this. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to come back because I'm, I'm going to think about this. Okay. I got more. Yeah, I got questions though. for days. Um, oh wait, you know what? What's the? Oh, okay. I would say. Yeah. I might say. Um, I might say Clippers. Um, some Clippers. Like hair yeah, Clippers. Man. Mm-hmm. Like my first little like that. Just that. that, I, that I, trade. I read somewhere or no? I think I watched somewhere. You cut your own hair. I do cut. I cut. You, hair. Are you cut? Yeah, yeah. I cut hair. I yeah, cut yeah. my own hair. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Clippers really that like I think that's just one of those things. It, it me being able to cut hair, just, I've saved money and it's just it's freedom. been helpful. It's freedom. But but I think about that. I think about my first pair that was like a pair of wall clippers for like twenty seven dollars or whatever it was. Yeah. But even though that pair has broken down, <laughs> and I've upgraded from that. But the point is, is that I will say clippers have changed my have changed my life. And I got to say my air fryer. I can't believe I forgot of about course. the air fryer. Of I ain't course. got one yet. I keep oh. hearing about it. How are you Every living? time I see your live, you in the kitchen. How you don't have an air fryer? I'm buying you an air fryer. I didn't mean to disappoint you down like that. Listen, oh, I felt Yo, that. My, fault, man. my air fryer. I keep hearing about them, dude. Everybody. They're amazing. Uh, I keep hearing about them. I got one for Christmas. Change the game. Dog, my air fryer. You can has... cook like you can go and get, like, say you get fish, right? I keep hearing this. Fried fish. Wow. And then you're like, oh, you know, I'm full. I'm going to just put this in the fridge. Next thing you know, you can throw your fried fish in the air fryer. Yes. And it's as good as when you got it. I can't try. I can't I'm the only one that's out the loop. Yeah, no, I'm getting you an air fryer. <laughs> Every time I see London Brown live, he in his kitchen. <laughs> I'm telling you. Do you eat leftovers? Yeah. Okay, because some people don't. And I if you do. eat leftovers, though, that changes the whole Yo, thing. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, okay. going, that's what I need. Yeah, facts. Excellent. Okay, a um, couple more questions. What's the worst advice that you've gotten from a fellow comedian? Okay, I got one. <laughs> that was quick. Yeah, because I, I... Who I, was I, it? Um, <laughs> Hilarious. He don't care about people's relationships at all. <laughs> he don't care about... I got to see these people after this. Hilarious. <laughs> this, this advice, someone told me... I know he, he, his intentions were good. He wanted to see me su- 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 succeed, but I just couldn't go this route. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's just like, yo, London, you really talented, man. You know what you need to do? Because they're not, they not really seeing you. This is before all the TV stuff. He said, man, they're not really seeing you. You need to go ahead and just, like, start a fight or something. I said, what? what? Yeah, you just need to go and punch somebody. And, you know, because you talented. You just need to put your hands on somebody. I was like, he wanted me to take, like, the 50 cent approach. I'm like, I'm yeah. not, bro. But, yeah. And thank goodness, I didn't, you know, that ain't my angle. Because some, you know. But, but that was his advice. I said, I can't, I can't do that, man. Yeah. I feel like yeah. I know who said that. That's crazy. He was, he was, a, he was a veteran comedian who meant well. But I yeah. said, I can't be fighting people, man. Did you wait when you got that advice? Were you in your head? Were you going down like the list of comedians? Like I could, I could take him. I could take this person. No, no. You know did what? You, did you get that far? I, 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 I couldn't get that far because I was still stuck on the fact that he said that. I was like, <laughs> yeah. It's like really? Yeah, man, you be good. I mean, just just start a fight, start some confusion. <laughs> I was like, man, I'm not gonna do that, man. That is terrible advice. <laughs> you know. Horrible. I'm glad you didn't take yes, it. Yes, man. Yeah. I, I've had uh, some comedians tell me to write write all my stuff out verbatim. Mm-hmm. Mm. You should be writing your stuff out verbatim. And I was like, uh, you know. Yeah. That ain't. I, yeah. That ain't my style. Right. That's so. My first bomb was that. So yeah. I took like a, a comedy class, oh. and the teacher of that class encourages all the students to write it out like a script, right? And so when you do that, the problem is you're memorizing words and not a story. There right. you go. And, you and lose so the you lose the feeling. And so what happened? I got on stage, and I said the first line that I remembered. Completely forgot the like the, the hook, <laughs> yeah. that next thing, and I was just standing there like, shit, uh, <laughs> what the, what is the next thing? Yeah. Yeah. Hot up there, yeah. it was That's hot. It. And then once I remembered that next line, then the, of course yeah. everything else came together. But it was just like, yeah. never again, yeah, never again. The worst advice I've ever yeah. gotten from a comic is, yeah. um, let me manage you. Let uh, me manage you. I don't know why OG older male yeah. comics. Oh, you know why? Want to they want to get me. that cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Let me manage you. No. 
<laughs> that's a whole podcast. Oh that that's God. a whole episode. Let me get that cooking. They are so serious. Like I had an OG like follow me around a couple shows, and I was just like, "Look, I don't know how to tell him," and I had to have somebody else tell him. Like, yeah. I try to tell all female comedians, especially if they pretty, if you started doing comedy for two weeks and the OG, like, y'all, I'm going to take you on the road, he trying to fuck. Yeah. You watch out. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah you've been t- two weeks in the game. And yeah. You, you yeah. see some <laughs> niggas. Yeah. Nah. But, like, they'll try to, like, introduce me to people, and I'm like, first of all, I know them. Like, he going uh, yeah. he, he to have you in a bicycle shop with your shirt off, like, like Dudley on different strokes. <laughs> Damn. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay. I think I think we're good. We're good? Yeah. I think we're right. I feel Boom. great. I got more questions, but, you know, those yeah, guys that, have been that, on this. One question was great, man. That was a real. Yeah, I, I love that a, question. That Under $100. I, was I solid, love man. that. I love that. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, this has been an episode of the Sunday Scoop. We're right here. Yeah. Uh, another episode of the Sunday Scoop. Thank you for joining us. Um, before we get out of here, can you just give everybody your socials just so we know where to follow you? Um, I'm, I'm going to be right here to this I'm camera. I'm at Real London Brown, at Real London Brown on Snapchat, Instagram. And then my TikTok is going to be coming soon. So just, oh, real quick, look for my, um, on Instagram, look, enjoy my white tea talks. White They're called T-talk. London's White Tea Talks. And I just give 30 seconds of, <laughs> you know, my perspective on things. Okay. Yeah. White Tea Talks. And you can follow me on IG, Instagram at Comedian Trey Elliott, T-R-E-Y-E-L-L-I-O-T. On Facebook, Trey Elliott. On TikTok, Comedian Trey Elliott. I do my uh, my commentary on my memes. And, uh, you know, so, you know, real Hilarious. dope. Yeah, man. And uh, you can catch me at the city near you on the Rock the Mic tour with Tony Rock. And, uh, yeah, Amazing. and the Adaptable tour with Daphne Springs, too. So you can oh, catch me on some Daphne. shows with her. Yeah, yeah, man. So follow me, man. Great. Dope, man. And I forgot the most important question. Real quick, it doesn't have to be a long answer, but yeah. just what does Chocolate Sundays mean to you? You know, for me, it's always uh, it's always an interesting thing because I remember when I first when I first did this room, I did my three minutes, and then they told me the next time I would be booked would be like ten years later, <laughs> <laughs> and it was the truth. Uh, <laughs> it was. They gave me the next day. I thought it would be funny. It's like, oh, you be back in June or such and such, way down the line. Yeah. So anyway, what makes this this room dope is um, one the energy here is not like any other room. Fact. This mm-hmm. uh, I mean, and there's a lot of good rooms, but just the energy. I got so I got to give a shout out to Ron G. Mm-hmm. And who, who, the curator and, of the energy. I yeah. got uh, I say hey, to Carl, I've seen her host a couple times. Yeah, yeah. Um, they have a lot to do with that because you know sometimes mm-hmm. that host can bring the energy down. But he's having fun, so I got to give him a shout out. Shout out to the staff here and Lonnie and everybody else. But yeah. it's just a fact that um, you know this room. If you don't feel like a star nowhere else, you gonna this feel like one here. Feel the love. Dude, it do give you make you feel special. Yeah. So shout out to the to the Amazing. people, man. Yeah, for me it means. History, it means mm. you know, it's when you hear you're part of history, yeah, you know what I mean. And to be able to be on the stage, be on the stage several times, you know, I'm at the point, you know, through the grace of God, where I could call Lonnie and be like, Yo, I need to go up this day, I need to do this. Like, you know, I don't take that for granted because I understand that people got dates for two years from now. Mm-hmm. So for me, it just it's history for me. And I put my time in to where I, I'm like, okay, you know, like this is a home. Yeah. And uh, so it's comedy, it's black comedy history. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Chocolate Sundays, man. So, Great answer. Yeah. Shout real quick, because he's mentioned uh, black comedy history. Shout out to Paul Mooney. Peace be upon him. Um, the late. There you go. The late great Paul's <laughs> White people, you scared me. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Paul. I want to think Paul about Paul Bowen. when he said here. It's yeah. Amazing. That's great. No, and that's, that's honestly one of the reasons why we started the podcast. Was yeah. Because you get to see everybody's act on stage, but it's like getting to know, you know, behind the scenes. Yeah. Who yeah. are the comedians? What is their journey? That's what this whole thing is about. Dope. So Dope hopefully, doubt. you know, a couple years from now, we look back and say, like, oh, this is some cool footage before y'all take off. Even more. Yeah, even more. Even yeah. more. Even more. Yeah. You know? No so. doubt. No doubt. Great. Callie, where can we find you? Um, I am at, at like Callie Scott on everything. L-I-K-E-K-A-L-I-S-C-O-T-T. I got Rummy the Meat merch. If you want to see your girl as a cartoon yelling Rummy the Meat, you can get you a shirt. Um, I've also got my silhouette on some shirts. So if you want to see me a little sexy, go no. ahead and go to CallieScott.com. Um, and that's how you can get in connection with me. 
<laughs> Perfect. And uh, you can just find me at Rich Made That One, a number one on IG. Thank you. And this was your Sunday Scoop. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.